Think of all the security dangers we've exposed involving online games and interactive sites. This one tonight is different. ABC 15 investigator Joe Ducey takes us into a fake world, creating real problems for one local family. He was so upset. I mean, he was just heartbroken. I mean, this was his whole Christmas. A world set in medieval times. It's where an 11-year-old like Timmy Easter of Gilbert can act like someone much older. Timmy is so good at it that people ask him for help. He spent years gaining a high level in an online game called RuneScape. Do you remember when all our gaming setups used to look like that? Boy, am I glad we're past those days. But why bother upgrading your PC and desk if you're not going to upgrade your browser as well? Before we get into today's topic, I want to give a quick shout out to this video's sponsor, Opera GX, which is pretty much the ultimate browser for all of you gamers out there. All those mid-2000s kids on Internet Explorer and AOL dial-up couldn't have even dreamed of a browser like this. Opera GX helps enhance the performance of your PC while gaming with its GX control and network limiter to stop you getting any pesky lag while you're scoring those 360 no-scope headshots. <laughs> Or, more realistically, while you're respawning after getting sniped. I've seen how you play, don't lie to me. If you're like me and have about 20 tabs of memes open from the RuneScape subreddit at all times, you've got this panel to let you limit how much CPU or RAM the browser can use. Plus, you can limit that bandwidth to make sure as much of it is going to your games as possible. Ouch, look at Chrome's usage. How embarrassing. Plus, switching your browser to Opera GX is as easy as putting on a new pair of shoes. Just hit that import tool and bam, you've kept your browsing history, bookmarks and cookies. Actually, hang on, let me delete some of that internet history real quick. Opera GX is also fully compatible with the Chrome Web Store, so all of your extensions are good to go as well. Opera GX is also now available on mobile and can connect straight to the desktop version. No efficiency loss, even when you need to take those pesky bathroom breaks. Just click the link down below to get it on your desktop or phone, or both, and level up your gaming experience. We're living in the future these days, why not get a browser to match the times, you know? Cast your minds back to December 2008. Barack Obama had just become the US president. Satoshi Nakamoto had just published the white paper for Bitcoin. But more importantly, RuneScape HD had now been out for almost six months. As everyone is waiting for Santa to bring them everything on their Christmas list, RuneScape players are getting stuck into the new minigame Stealing Creation while talking about this brand new quest called Wild Gothic Sleeps, a quest still considered one of the best in the game to this very day. And with a brand new Santa outfit available from the holiday event, RuneScape players can do this all while rocking a festive look. One such player is Hellslayer H, or in real life, an 11-year-old boy named Timmy. Timmy is your average young RuneScape player. He trains his skills, he does his quests, he admires the high-level players in their expensive gear. He wants to be just like them. But Timmy has responsibilities like homework and eating his vegetables. He doesn't have the spare time to become one of RuneScape's elite, oh no. But Timmy finds a solution. When googling how to make money in RuneScape, he discovers that there are websites where you can pay real money to get some RuneScape gold. In fact, this gold is very cheap. It would take Timmy tens of hours to get the same amount he could purchase for a few dollar bills. But Timmy is 11 years old. He doesn't have a job, he doesn't have any money, and his parents aren't going to buy gold for him. But he does have one thing. A Christmas list. Timmy pleads with his grandmother Claire for RuneScape GP. He's never wanted anything else so badly in his life. Poor Claire can't stand to see her grandson in such agony, so she tells the family what to do. Timmy doesn't want a Nintendo DS. Timmy doesn't want an Xbox 360 that would red ring within three months. Timmy wants money. And so, when Christmas Day rolls around, it's a miracle. Timmy acquires 140 American dollars. With this money, he immediately goes and buys all the gold his RuneScape heart desires. Somehow, despite the free trade restrictions, Timmy receives every last coin off it. And finally being as RuneScape rich as he had dreamed of, he goes out and buys the coolest weapons and armor, showing off his purchases to everyone he passes by. It's a happy ending to the story. He got his dream gold, he got his dream items, and all that was left was to put in the time and effort to achieve his dreams of having a really high level account. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. My name is Will Miss It, and I'll see you all. Wait, hang on, what's this?
A player stops Timmy, showing awe and amazement at his super cool gear. This player, Birdflu J.O.O., thinks Timmy is the coolest guy he's ever seen. Timmy should join a super cool, super exclusive clan only for super cool guys like him. This is the big break Timmy had been waiting for. He was finally going to truly join the RuneScape Elite. He just needed to quickly fill out the application form, and he'd be one of the coolest dudes who'd ever lived. The random stranger seemed trustworthy enough, and hey, this application is through the official RuneScape site, so it must be legit. Well, I mean, it looks exactly like the RuneScape site, so it's gotta be the official one, right? Timmy quickly signs into the site to confirm that the application is for his account. This all seems perfectly reasonable to Timmy's 11-year-old mind. But when he logs into the site, there is no application to be found. Confused, Timmy goes to log back into his account to ask the nice stranger what went wrong, but his account is already logged in? Several minutes go by. His account seems to be taking a while to log out. Must be a server problem. But after dozens of unsuccessful attempts to log in, Timmy finally gets back online and finds himself parked in Lumbridge with all of his items gone. All the gold that he had bought and everything else he'd obtained even before that, all missing. Timmy had been hacked. The clan Timmy had been invited to join was in fact the White Legion. Bit of a yikes name, come to think of it. When Bird Flu had said that it was full of super cool guys, what he meant was that it was full of scammers and other players engaging in shady activity. Timmy was never going to be joining this clan, he was just another in their long list of victims. Bird Flu, the nice stranger who had complimented Timmy just moments earlier, now sent a barrage of taunts over private messages, laying into Timmy for falling for it. Bird Flu says he's extremely happy about the whole thing and would gladly do it again in a heartbeat. Hell, he'd gladly do it again to Timmy specifically, hoping to clean him out a second time after Timmy had started to build it all back. Timmy sends in report after report of Bird Flu's rule-breaking actions and abusive behavior, but nothing he does will get his items back to him. He's lost everything. Timmy weeps for his RuneScape account. Alfred Tennyson once wrote that it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. But an 11-year-old doesn't care for philosophy or poetry. All he cares about is that his RuneScape items are gone. His Christmas is ruined. His heavy cries echoes into the night. Grandmother Claire cannot stand to see her grandson so tormented like this. She does not understand the game, but she understands that someone has stolen his Christmas gift from him. The gift from all the family. And she knows what to do about stealing. The world needs to know about this. ABC 15 investigator Joe Ducey takes us into a fake world, creating real problems for one local family. He was so upset. I mean, he was just heartbroken. I mean, this was his whole Christmas. She's talking about real money lost in a virtual world, a world set in medieval times. It's where an 11-year-old like Timmy Easter of Gilbert can act like someone much older. Timmy and his family recently learned this virtual world is full of some real-life dangers. He said, excuse me, Hell Slayer, can I speak to you for a moment? Timmy says another player started a conversation asking him to do something rare. Would you like to join the clan called the White Legion? Go back to the real, fake. You can see there are only subtle differences between the two. In just minutes, Timmy's password was hacked, stolen. His account with all these points and belongings emptied out. Grandmother Claire Kephart says Timmy received and spent 140 real dollars to buy virtual swords and armor, making him more powerful in the game. Gone in one day because this kid took it. And it's, it's sad that this has to happen because there's so many kids that are on this site. It's about what you expect from a late 2000s news story on gaming. The target audience are parents who don't really understand this new video game fad, even though it's been going on for a few decades at that point. But it gets the point across. Watch out for phishing attempts online. You could lose real money because of it. To make sure this doesn't result in a scare campaign that makes parents stop their kids from playing RuneScape, Jagex issues a statement included in the news report, reassuring everyone that RuneScape is safe for all their players. 
Neither Timmy nor Claire wanted to be in the report at first, with Timmy especially being worried about being recognized. But news companies don't care about the people featured in the story. They care about being able to milk the story for all they can. So Timmy and Claire are brought in, front and center, with the best sad faces they can force. Now, online media was still fairly scarce in 2009. The top YouTube videos of the year were Susan Boyle, David After Dentist, and JK Wedding Entrance Dance? <laughs> God. I actually remember this. I don't think I've seen it in over 10 years. Anyway, point being, lots of kids would still have been watching TV with their parents. So, a lot of RuneScape players actually saw this report live, and they go on and share it to the players who didn't watch it live. RuneScape in the news, how funny. But with enough players who actually understand the game watching it, the details that the news skimmed over get noticed. After all, Timmy confessed to buying gold. That's real world trading. That's against the rules. Really, Timmy's account shouldn't have the items returned. It should be banned. As discussion breaks out on RuneScape fansite forums and in YouTube comment sections of re-uploads of the news story, some players start sending ABC15 letters asking them to do a follow-up about how Timmy was a filthy rule breaker. That good-for-nothing 11-year-old needs someone to teach him a lesson. And wait, 11-year-old? The RuneScape rules clearly state you need to be 13 or older to play. He's breaking the rules again! Mr. ABC15! Send him to the principal's office and have him expelled! Jagex also got some backlash for their statement in the news. The PR manager, Adam Tuckwell, had confirmed that real-world trading was against the rules. But Timmy's account was not banned from the game. And with that kind of worms open, people started chipping away at the statement on the news as well. Adam had told ABC15 that Jagex worked to return stolen items to hijacked accounts, which was a lie. Jagex had no such policy at the time, and they weren't going to implement one either. Outrageous. Some people like to say that pre-2010 was the Wild West of the internet. Trolls could do horrible things with no repercussions, since no one was tech-savvy enough to know how to stop them or pierce through the veil of anonymity they hid behind. So, if you thought Timmy getting hacked and taunted was the worst thing to happen to him and his family, buckle up, because things are about to get much worse. Because the grandmother Claire had gone on the news and had her full name broadcasted to the world, it wasn't hard to find her personal details in the Arizona Yellow Pages. So, sometime after this report, the phone rings, and she picks it up. Must be a friend or family member, right? Wrong. The man or teenager on the other side of the line begins laying into her and her idiot grandson, talking about all the items that Timmy had lost. Actually, he talks about them in a little too much detail, including stuff that only Timmy and one other person would have known about. Claire quickly realizes that she's talking to the person who stole everything from Timmy. We don't know exactly how she reacted to this, but there's not much she could have done. If she hung up, nothing was accomplished. And if she hit back and argued at him, he probably would have just laughed in her face until she hung up anyway. But that phone call wasn't the end of it. Over the next hours, several phone calls are made to Claire's phone. Some from the hijacker, some from his friends. Some tell her to subscribe to the Will Miss It channel to make sure that you don't miss future uploads. It's non-stop. Her husband becomes increasingly annoyed at this ceaseless harassment, understandably so, and threatens to call the police on the trolls, something they laugh off. More calls come in, with them asking Claire and her husband if they've called the police yet. The couple move on to threatening to call the FBI, riling the trolls up even further, who still don't take the situation seriously. The calls continue to flood in, and then the doorbell starts ringing. The couple aren't sure how the trolls had got their phone number, but it isn't a stretch to think that they've got their address as well. This can't be a coincidence. Having spent the entire day being riled up and not knowing who is behind the door, Claire's husband grabs his gun, ready to chase the harassers off the property if he has to. So, weapon brandished, he opens the door and is met by a number of black masks, shields and heavy guns. The SWAT team explains that they had received a call about a mass shooter in their backyard and began to search the property. They ask Claire's husband about the gun, who talks about what had been happening to them, and how it was a good thing that they had rang the bell and announced their arrival calmly. Because things might have turned out much worse if they had stormed the property without warning. 
This story could have very easily involved fatal damage if it had gone slightly differently. However, beyond being extremely dangerous, this prank call was also highly illegal. Claire and her partner might not have had much luck just going off a series of harassing calls. But on top of this incident, the authorities can begin a serious investigation. But unfortunately, it is the wild west of the internet. The internet provider AT&T proceeds to trace the phone calls, but the calls had been made from a computer, so there was no number used by the trolls and no way to track them down. Several days later, the phone rings again. Claire expects a troll, but it's actually ABC News wanting to do a follow-up story. Okay, I lied. It's actually a troll. The reporter is the controversial RuneScape YouTuber Wildy Owns One, who you might know better as Return of Wilderness. But the elderly Claire doesn't know that and believes the call's authenticity. Wildy records the call and posts it on YouTube. Claire reveals to Wildy that Jagex had been in touch with both them and the real ABC reporter Joe Ducey, talking about getting in touch with Jagex's lawyers in an attempt to catch the hijackers. However, they didn't want to return Timmy's items to him. She also reveals that Timmy has seen a lot of the awful comments made against him on the various websites, something which worries Claire, as an 11-year-old boy shouldn't be exposed to such nastiness, especially as a result of what he's been through. Luckily, it seems that the kids at his school haven't also been giving him grief for it, with most of them feeling sorry for what he lost. Wildy also promises Claire that they could get in touch with YouTube support to have some of the comments removed, something that Claire would be overjoyed at. However, this is just a setup for a second prank call later that day, where Wildy's friend Rob pretends to be YouTube support while talking to Claire. The conversation starts out with Rob telling Claire to just report the mean comments. Clearly an implausible situation, but Claire does say she's read all 5,000 or so comments left about Timmy. Claire also confides in Rob about the troll calls and the swatting incident mentioned earlier. Rob also prods at Claire about Timmy's real-world trading antics, although Claire seems to think that everything Timmy did is above board because there's a special room that the trades takes place in, and the RWT sites claim they transfer the gold in a way that's fine with Jagex. Lastly, Rob tries to wrangle the name of Timmy's account out of Claire, but she doesn't know it, but does admit that she gave it to the real ABC News reporter. While the trolls have access to Claire, they don't have access to the reporter, so Timmy's account remains private information for now. The only people who know the name of it are Timmy, his friends, and the hijackers. Anyway, a few days later, the hijackers upload a screenshot of Timmy's account, username and all. The screenshot captures the moment they stole all the belongings from the account, by killing him in a PvP zone while he's carrying everything. And if there was any doubt that this was the real account, Timmy actually confirmed it in the news report. Excuse me, Hellslayer, can I speak to you for a moment? Hellslayer H. The floodgates open up even more at this point. It's not just a few bold trolls harassing Timmy's grandparents, it's everyone harassing Timmy himself. Even if he turns off his private messages, people spot him in-game, and many people approach him to make fun of him, degrade him, or anything else they feel like doing to make an 11-year-old feel bad about themselves. Videos of these chance encounters are uploaded to YouTube, where the abuse continues in the comments. Other videos are uploaded of people talking about the hijacking or parodying the news broadcast themselves. Timmy's family recently realized that he's so stupid that this online world poses some real-life threats. In 2010, a year and a half after the news report aired, a video was uploaded apparently showing Hellslayer H botting baby black dragons in the Chaos Tunnels. This seemed to be the last sign of life from Timmy's account, which disappeared from the RuneScape high score sometime after this. There have been rumors that Timmy might have chosen to change his username sometime in late 2010, wanting to leave the past and the abuse behind him. A post made in February 2011, bragging about a successful lure against Timmy, claims he changed his username to I Rule the WL. I wasn't able to find any evidence to back this up, however, so take that with a pinch of salt. Whatever happened to Timmy, he's no doubt been scarred by this incident, alongside the rest of his family. What should have been a happy Christmas holiday where Timmy got some RuneScape items turned into a Christmas that was robbed from them. And their desire for justice had what felt like the entire world turning against them for no other reason than mob entertainment. It's probably for the best that we have no idea where Timmy is now, since that means no one can still go out and hurt him. 
Sometimes stories don't really have a happy ending. Today's tale is one of those times. Thank you all for watching today's video. I can't really say I hope you enjoyed it due to the dark subject matter, but you get what I mean. I'm a big fan of the game and everyone who plays it, but it's a big shame to see how in some cases the community bands together for the wrong reasons. Sure, real world trading is against the rules, but it's up to Jagex to deal with that issue. Not an entire community bullying an 11 year old and his elderly grandparents for the lulz. I'm definitely nostalgic for a lot of stuff around this time, but I'm glad we're far beyond the Wild West days where people did this sort of stuff and got away with it. I usually try to avoid being biased in these documentaries, but it'd feel wrong if I didn't end it on some sort of note sticking up for the poor kid when almost no one else did. Wherever Timmy might be these days, I hope he's doing alright for himself. My name is Will Miss It, and I'll see you all later.